Your victory. 
to your children. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part of your family. Lord, we love you so much, and every bit of this is for you. So God, just help us just continue to walk forward in faith with you. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. You guys can take a seat. We're going to take an offering. Everybody is looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> my voice is, going. is that better? <laughs> Just breaks me. 
down to his knees But God, I've been broken more than a time or two And then he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man I'm on a single And at this time, if the children would come forward for children's time, come on up, gang. Something really different and amazing is going to happen today. Different and amazing. How are we doing? Um, yeah. Now, you're not in school right now, right? No, not in school. You having a good summer? Pretty good summer? Is it, it, is, is it exciting? A pretty exciting summer? Yeah. Something exciting is going to happen in just a moment. Do you believe me? No. No? You believe me? Believe you. Well, that's going to happen too later. Y'all are going to camp, right? Summer camp. That's good. But here's what's going to happen in just a moment. Very mysteriously, all the lights are going to go out in this place. You believe me? Who believes me? Not me. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Do you believe me? He, he believes me. Do you want to see the lights go out? Yes. Okay, I'm going to use you. Stand up. Okay, here's what you got to see. There's, there's a specific way the lights have to go out. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Well, I, I walk over here. Walk over here. I think this is the place. Now, you see this? That, that's, a, that's a prayer rail, like a chancel rail. All right, you have to knock three times very hard for it to work, and all the lights are going to go out. Believe me? All right, let's see if you got it. No, ow! Whoa. <laughs> I saw that. It worked. Wow, you did it. You did it very, very good. All right, we can turn the lights back on now. Yeah, yeah. Now, how did you know that was going to happen? Because you, I told you, right? And you trusted my words. I told you it was going to happen, and you trusted my words. Now, the reason I knew it was going to happen is because I talked to the people in the sound booth. And I asked them whenever you knock three times to cut it off. But you didn't know that, did you? You just trusted my words. You know what that means? That means you had faith in my words. Now, you might remember last Sunday we talked about Noah. Remember talking about Noah? And we talked about how he built the ark and all that kind of stuff. Do you know how the Bible says he built it? Anybody know? It says he built the ark by faith. He built the ark by faith. Now think about it, because when God first told Noah, build that ark, it wasn't raining. Had not rained in a long, long time. The world had never been flooded. And yet, and, and it wasn't going to rain for a long, long time, but still, Noah built the ark. Why? Because he believed God's words. You know, God gives his people promises. Do, do, do y'all believe that God's going to keep his promises? Do you believe that? Yes. You know what that means? That means you have faith. And with faith in God, you can do anything. Let's say a prayer. God, I thank you for these kids, and I thank you for their faith in you. And I pray that all of us would learn to believe in your words and have faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you're going to go to Jam Zone, which is children's worship, Miss Sarah, the children's director, is right back there, and she's ready to take you to Jam Zone if you want to go. Well, let me say welcome to yeah, I'm on. let me say welcome to First United Methodist Church. Great to see everybody on boy summer. You know, it, it seems like summer's you know already came, right? 
But it officially like started just this past week. We are now into summer. Um, and I like you're all dressed in your summer clothes, you know, casual, that's really good, I like that. Uh, let, let me say this, if you are a first-time guest with us today, uh, we want to say how happy we are uh, that of all the churches you could have worshipped with, you chose to worship with us today. And, and, and you know, you, we, we're really thankful for that, and we truly uh, hope and pray that today for you will be a, a day full of the joy of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're a first-time guest, and if somehow you managed to slip into this place and you've not registered your attendance at one of our visitor centers. There's one at the entrance of this place and there's one at the entrance of the other side of the building over there. Uh, if, if, if you do that, we have a packet to give you to tell you about all the many ministries that go on here, not just on Sundays, but all throughout the week. We have a wide range of ministries to meet a wide range of needs and we want you to be aware of all of them. Uh, and for instance, one of the things I encourage you to take advantage of when you leave here is connections. Uh, connections is like a breakfast and coffee and designer coffee, and you can just hang out and get to know folks. It's downstairs in the fellowship hall. Strongly encourage you to go and do that. Now, one of the things that we take very seriously here at First Methodist uh, is, is Bible reading. Uh, and we, we uh, kind of challenge each other to read at least a chapter of the Bible each week. Uh, and then I give you a quiz to see how well you did. And, uh, uh, you know, the chapter, we, we, we not only do we put it in the bulletin what next week's reading is, but remember, if you download the app, that scripture goes straight to your phone. So I encourage you to do that. But here's your quiz for last week's reading. Last week was Mark, the sixth chapter. Uh, and in this chapter, Jesus goes back to his hometown. And here's the question. What does the text say about that experience, about Jesus going back to his hometown? Now, is the answer A, he could only do small miracles? Is the answer B, he spoke to the people and they were amazed and called him a prophet? Is the answer C, he called together the people and sent them out two by two? Or is the answer uh, D, that the people would not stop calling him his childhood nickname, which was Bubba? Bubba Jesus. Okay, if you think the answer is A, he could only do some small miracles, raise your hand. Okay, if you think the answer is B, he spoke to the people and they were amazed and called him a prophet, raise your hand. Got a few there. If you think the answer is C, that he called together the people and sent them out two by two, raise your hand. Got a lot of those. Okay, and anybody think he had a nickname Bubba? I mean, this is East Texas, I get that, but no, he did not have a Bubba nickname. You know, I, I got you that time, I got you, because the story is, of, of two by two is in there, but that didn't happen at his hometown. Listen to what verse 5 says. Verse 5 says, he could not do any miracles there except just to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And some translations say he could only do a few small miracles. And that was because he was in his hometown, and they're like doubting who he is. And who's this guy? We saw him raised up as a little kid. I mean, he can't be a prophet. Uh, but it, uh, interesting reading. I, and and what, what is it for next week? Anybody give me, what does it say? Mark 7. So Mark 7. So next week, Read Mark, the seventh chapter, so you'll look really smart when we have the quiz, okay? I want to share with you today uh, from the book of Hebrews. I'm going to be reading Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 3 and verse 7. Listen to God's word. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Would you pray with me? Oh, holy God, we thank you for this time together. Father, we thank you for the gift of worship and the fact that we can, can raise our praise to you as, as one family, as one body in Christ. Father, we're thankful for the gift of your son Jesus and how his birth and, and life and death and resurrection has purchased our redemption. And Father, I want to thank you for the gift of the Holy Scriptures and for the knowledge that every single time 
that we break up and open your word that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can show us something new and different. And Father, we pray for that today. I pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive your words. Help us right now in this time and place to block out any interferences, any distractions, anything that tries to keep us from centering ourselves on your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, today we kick off a sermon series for the summer, uh, and, and, and it's called a character tour of the Old Testament. Now, one thing that I should let you know about this series, it's not just about Old Testament characters. In fact, as each week goes by, I think that you're going to realize that more than anything else, that this series is about the characteristics that God wants to develop in your life. So as we look at these Old Testament characters, we're going to focus on the characteristics that they portrayed that God also wants to develop in your life. For example, today we're going to look at Noah because Noah was a portrait of faith. And so as we look at Noah, we're going to, we're going to look at the characteristics of faith in his life and how God wants to develop faith in our lives. Now next week we're going to do the same thing with Abraham, who was a portrait of obedience. And, and we're going to ask, how did, how did Abraham model obedience, and, and how does God want us to, to model obedience in our life? And the week after that, we're going to look at through the eyes of Deborah and the courage that she had, and we're going to discuss how God wants us to be courageous in our life. And here's one of the key themes for this series, and you need to listen to this very closely. God is far more interested in your character than he is your comfort. I'm going to say that again. God is far more interested in your character than he is your comfort. You see, God's constantly stretching you to go beyond your comfort zone. And that's so that God can grow your character. As a matter of fact, as you think about your life, there are two places that you can live your life, two zones, if you will, and the first zone is the comfort zone. Now, the reality is that most of us spend a great deal of our lives in the comfort zone. And that's because it's safe. It doesn't require a lot of courage. It doesn't require a lot of faith. It doesn't really require a lot of obedience. I mean, we can just kick back and, and kind of hang out here and, and just settle down in this comfort zone. But see, the problem with the comfort zone is that by definition, the comfort zone it's a no-grow zone. And so if you stay in the comfort zone, the longer you stay there, the longer that you're going to stay the same. Well, in fact, actually the longer you stay there, the less that you're going to stay the same because you're going to atrophy into something less. And, it, and it's, the, it's not the direction that God desires for your life. And so... so so what we have to do from time to time is to stretch ourselves out of the comfort zone and get into the other zone, which we can think of as the character zone. Now, the character zone is, is not always so safe. In fact, the character zone can sometimes be downright scary. But it's only in the character zone that we can experience the growth that God wants us to have in our lives. And it's only in the character zone that, that God can develop the characteristics that we need in our life. It's only here in the character zone that we can find significance so that we can grow and become all that God created us to be. And so this whole series, I'm going to challenge you to get out of the comfort zone and get into the character zone. And today, to help us along this morning, we're going to look at a character that we talked about briefly last week. We're going to talk about Noah. And that's because Noah represents the characteristics of faith. And I, and I thought before we started that, that maybe I'd give you a bit of a quiz on Noah. I mean, last week, we, we quizzed the kids, right? So this time, it's your turn. And so here, here's the first question. And I want you to listen really, really carefully to this question, all right? How many pairs of different animals did Moses take into the ark? Raise your hand if you think it's one pair. Nobody? No, what do you think? 
Oh, he's got an answer. I know he does. What he, I'm, not, I'm not stepping out there. It's a trick. It's a trick. Okay? Well, first off, did you catch? I, I said Moses. I didn't say Noah. Moses, he never had an ark. That's a guy that split the Red Sea. Okay? I'm talking about Noah here. And so let's ask this again. Slowly, how many pairs of different kinds of animals did Noah take into the ark? All right, if you think one pair, raise your hand. If you're scared to death because you don't want to be wrong, raise your hand. Okay. Well, now first, here's the thing. If you raised your hand, you're right, but you're also wrong. Okay? Um, in Genesis uh, chapter 7, verses 2 and 3, God tells Moses to take one pair of every unclean animal and seven pairs of every clean animal. I bet you didn't know that. And, and, and we're going to talk about why God said that in a moment. And, and something else that I bet you didn't know about Noah. Did you know that Bible scholars tell us that, that Noah lived in the region that today is known as Iraq? Now, that's important for a number of reasons. First, it means, and think about this, Noah built the ark in the middle of a desert. Now think about that. And not only that, but there's a, a, really, a really great chance that Noah, ne Noah never even saw a boat in his entire life. Now think about that. I want you to think about that as I remind you of today's scripture lesson. And, and specifically what Paul says in Hebrews, the first chapter, or the 11th chapter, verse 1. Listen to this. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. I mean, do you see why, why Noah is a portrait of faith? And, and do you see why faith is over in the character zone instead of the comfort zone? See, when you live in the comfort zone, you just do things that you can see. You do things that make sense. You do things that you can visualize. But when you get out of the comfort zone and you get into the character zone, well, now you're no longer operating by sight you're operating by faith. And you're doing things that you can't see. I mean, you're taking steps of faith when you can't see what the future is going to be. And that's because faith is the confident assurance that what is promised will happen. I mean, not what you can see. And see, see Noah represents that. In today's text, uh, verse 7 says this, By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. Now I want you to notice that the text did not say, by his great knowledge of shipbuilding, or by his uncanny ability to predict the weather. No, it says Noah built the ark by faith. See, through faith, you and I can do things we never imagined. I mean, do you think that Moses ever imagined? I mean, a guy who could hardly speak, you think he ever imagined that he would, he would speak to Pharaoh and he would, he would basically talk Pharaoh into letting his people go and, letting, and, and he, that he would be the deliverer of all of Israel. He never imagined that. Do you think David, I mean, young little David with just a slingshot, you think he imagined that he would defeat the, the greatest warrior that Israel ever faced? Do you think that Saul ever imagine he would change his name to Paul and write more scripture than anybody else in the entire Bible. See, these men, they did not just decide to do these things by the force of their own will. It was through faith. Now I want you to listen to the rest of verse 7 of today's text. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And what this text is ultimately talking about is relationship. See, it takes righteousness to have a relationship with God. And that's why we can't have a relationship without Jesus because the Bible tells us that he alone is righteous. Faith did that for Noah. It gave him a relationship with God. See, faith is the way that, that God develops an intimate relationship with you. And this is why when you're in the comfort zone, sometimes you feel distant from God. 
And that's because it doesn't take any faith to live in that zone. But when you get out of the comfort zone and into the character zone, you start living by faith. And then you start connecting with God. You know, when you, when you, when you act by faith, it creates intimacy with God. And I truly believe that one of the reasons that you come here on Sunday, even if you don't know it, is because you deeply desire intimacy with God. Well, see, faith is the path to intimacy with God. And so what I want to do today, let's look at four lessons that we can learn from Noah that will help us to build our faith. And the first is this. Noah listened to God. Now, now we, here, here's the truth. We don't know if God spoke audibly to Noah or not. I mean, we like to believe that that's what happened, but all the Bible said was God spoke to Noah, and we all know that God speaks in many ways. Now, I personally believe that way back then that they didn't have the distractions that we have today, and so it was much easier to listen for God's voice. But regardless of how God spoke to Noah, I mean, if it was in a dream or if it was just a, a strong conviction deep in his soul, or even if it was an audible voice, Noah listened, and he acted on what God told him by faith. You know, today we have a venue from which God speaks that Noah didn't have, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. But then how, how often do we rely on the scriptures when we make a decision. You know, it often blows my mind how, how few Christians today actually read the Bible. I mean, we say we believe the Bible is inspired by God, that God speaks to us through the Bible. And yet so many of us don't read the Bible with any regularity. I mean, even though the church makes it easy by directing us which chapter to read, each week, and, and even downloads it to our phone. You know, the Bible is, is the handbook of faith. And it, it, it's instructions on how to live a life of faith. And, and, it, and it isn't just enough to read God's Word, but we got to take action on what we read. You know, in, in Genesis, when God tells Noah to build this big boat in the desert, even when Noah had never seen a boat before, Noah puts his faith in action. And as chapter 6 of Genesis, verse 22 puts it, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now the second lesson that we learn from Noah is the importance of taking small steps of faith every day. You know, depending on how you read the story of Noah and the ark, it took somewhere between 99 and 120 years to build it. Now, I think everybody will agree that building a boat that huge is a giant step of faith. But he didn't build it in a day, did he? No, it took at least 100 years. Now, I want you to think about that. Day after day, he gathered the wood, he hammered the nails, he measured the openings, he tested what he had built, day after day. And you and I both know that there were days when he said, am I making any progress? Is it worth it? Should I keep at it? I mean, it's been, it's been like 95 years and still no rain. Except what did he do? He took small steps of faith every single day. You know, in our last series, we talked about faith as a journey. And how it's a journey that God places us on for the purpose of growing our faith. But you know, that journey is almost always made up of small steps. See, when you take these small steps every day, gather the wood, hammer the nails, measure it out. When you take these small steps carefully and consistently over time, you find that your faith really begins to grow. Now, now, you might ask, well, what, what specifically are some small steps that I can take to, to grow my faith? Well, I already spoke about one, listening to God's word by reading the Bible. And another, word, and another way is just to pray, to pray daily, pray all the time. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to come up with these huge, big, monumental prayers. 
just authentic prayers. Just talk to God. Just small conversations with God all throughout the day. And I'm not talking about where you're like, God, help me out with this one, or God, do this for me. I'm talking like prayers of thanksgiving. God, thank you for my life. Thank you for everything that you've given me. I'm talking about things like, like God, help me to follow you more closely. God, today, help me to be the person you created me to be. God, God if only for today, help me to live a life of faith. You see, as you do this, you lay aside these, these small amounts every day in, in prayer and Bible study. When you do that, you find your faith really does begin to grow. And God begins to grow you from the inside out. Now, the third lesson that we learn from Noah is to turn our future over to God. You remember earlier when I told you about the, the seven pairs of clean animals that God told Noah to bring? Well, see, when the door of the ark was closed, and the scriptures tell us God's the one that shut the door of the ark. In fact, in Genesis, the seventh chapter, uh, verses 16, it says, and this is, this, I mean, this is kind of harsh, it says, the Lord shut him in. Well, when he was shut in, when the family was shut into that ark, that door stayed shut for 150 days. God never told Noah how long they were going to be in that ark. But God knew. And God was looking out for Noah's future. You see, here's the difference between a clean animal and an unclean animal. You can eat the clean animal. And so God had, had, had Noah carry seven pairs of clean animals so they could last for those 150 days that they were shut up inside the ark because God knew what the future would hold. You know, when, I, when, when you and I, when we turn over uh, our future to God, we get God's power in our lives. We get God's provision in our lives. We get God's protection in our lives. And so I ask you, is there something in your future that you need to turn over to God? Now, maybe you need to turn your heart over to God for the very first time. You know, many people do that every week when they decide to become a Christian, and, and that's the first step of a life of faith, turning your heart over to God. And maybe you need to do that. But maybe you've already done that, but, but maybe you need God's provision in your life. I mean, here it is, June 23rd, and the rent's due on the 1st. Maybe you need God's provision with that rent. Maybe you need God's provision for your career. Maybe, maybe you've been wondering that perhaps you need God's provision for a relationship. Or maybe you need God's protection. Maybe there's some kind of issue of health that you've been kind of fighting on your own, and, and you're certainly out of your comfort zone in this, and, and you need to turn that over to God. And, and maybe again, maybe it's maybe some issue of stress in your life, and, and you don't know what's going to happen but you're worried that it's going to break you and, and you need God's protection. Turn your future over to God. And then the fourth lesson that we learn from Noah, tell others your faith story. You see, God wants to build your faith by challenging you and by calling you to help build the faith of others. All of us have a faith story. You know, as a matter of fact, if you think about it, um, the reason that we can study uh, Noah's story today, many thousands of years later, is because somebody kept sharing that story. I mean, when Noah got off the boat, you know, he could have kept a lot of the little details to himself. But Noah told his children. And they told their children. And they told their grandchildren, and so on, and so on. And it went all the way down in history, and, it, and eventually it was recorded in the Scriptures. In fact, that's why we have the stories of Abraham and, and Deborah and Jesus. Because faith stories were shared. And they've always been shared. Because that's how faith works. It's always shared. And you know, if you think about it, God even gave Noah a way to share his faith story. Genesis chapter 9, towards the end of the story, if you remember, God made Noah a promise. He said, I will never again send a flood to wipe out the entire earth. And as a sign, God placed a rainbow in the clouds. 
Don't you know that from that day on, every time Noah saw a rainbow, or his kids saw a rainbow, or his grandkids saw a rainbow, or somebody who knew the story saw a rainbow, you know what they did? They said, hey, you see that rainbow up there? Let me tell you a story about what that means. And so Noah had a story, and he had a way to tell the story. Listen, those of you who are here today who are followers of Jesus, you too have a story. And God has given us the challenge to tell the story. You know, and, and, and there's a, there is a sign for us as well, a, a sign that we can tell that story is when we can gather together like this as a church and we see examples of life change. See, it's not about a rainbow. It's about what God is doing in your life. You see, when God's done something in your life, when you've experienced the faith touch of God in your life, well, God says the way that you grow in that experience is that you tell others about it. You know, there's a, a very old story about a famous preacher, and he's greeting church members as they leave on their way out of the church. And as, as you know, as members often do, one lady complimented the preacher on his sermon. She said, Pastor... That was one of the best sermons you ever preached. And the pastor looked at her, and this is what he said. Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? That remains to be seen. I want you to grow in your faith. And so my prayer is that next Sunday, every hand goes up during the weekly Bible quiz. I pray that you'll listen to God's Word and read it so you can listen. I pray that you take small steps of faith every single day so that God can prepare you for the giant steps that He wants you to take. I pray that you have the faith to trust God with your future. Go where the Spirit leads. Do what the Spirit is calling you to do. Trusting that God knows best. And, and, and I want this because I want you to have God's provision and God's protection. And I pray that, that as God changes you and teaches you and provides for you, that you share your story. You know, I've said this over and over again to you, that the purest definition of faith, total and complete trust in God, come what may. There's no better way to live life on this earth than that. No better way. No greater sense of security. No greater sense of confidence and peace. No greater sense of self-worth. See, this, this is what God wants for your life. This is who God wants you to be. God's desire is that you become a portrait of faith. Would you pray with me? God, help us to become a people of faith. Give us the wisdom to use the resources you give us and listen to your voice. Give us the discipline to take small steps of faith every single day. Give us the courage to give our future over to you. And give us the voice to share our story with others, that they too become a people of faith. In the name of Jesus, who is the source of our faith, we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. And now I'm going to invite the praise band to go ahead and come back up. Uh, and as they make their way up, so how much of, of your life does God really have? How much of, of your future does God really have? You know, as I said earlier, it, it starts with that first step of turning your heart over to God, asking, asking Jesus into your heart and life, asking God's Holy Spirit to come into your life and begin the process of making you into something new. And if that hasn't happened in your life today, it can happen right now. Maybe you're here today and, you know, life is just, life can be hard sometimes. 
And maybe you've got stresses and, and worries or, or physical challenges or relationship challenges and you're just not sure what to do. And you so need God's protection, God's guidance, God's provision. You know, one of the most powerful things that God has given us is the power of intercessory prayer. And what I mean is praying for each other. Uh, helping helping uh, each other to, to be assured that God's in control and has even our problems, no matter how big they may, may seem. And so if you're here today and if you're, if you're struggling with things and you really need some answers, uh, I, I can't tell you that we can give you the answers. God can, but I can tell you that we have people ready to pray for you, ready to pray with you. If anything, to remind you that God's in control. Maybe you're here and you've been worshiping with us off and on and you know, you've come to the realization that you didn't just decide to come in here. God's Spirit led you here and led you here for a reason. And I believe that reason could be God has a ministry here that God needs you to be a part of. And if this is you, then you may want to consider church membership. Not that it, you have to be a member to be in ministry. That's not at all what I'm talking about. But sometimes it's the next logical step. And if, and if this is you, then as we sing this last song with the praise band, I invite you to come forward. And what you'll find is we'll welcome you with open arms as we stand and sing and respond to God's word in our lives.
Okay, and I don't, you know, usually my, I think he stepped out. Stephen Fair, is he here? There he is. It's Stephen Fair's birthday today, okay? Yeah, yeah. And uh, 23 years old today. I'm telling you, ushering is rough. It takes years off your life. I mean, look at Mike Gowdy back there. All right, so we have a prayer quilt today. Uh, this quilt is for a fellow by the name of Glenn Cloudy. Now, Glenn uh, is involved in the Emmaus community, part of the Emmaus community. Uh, the truth about Glenn is he, he has terminal cancer, and they're saying that they can't give him any treatment. His prayer request is for prayer and joy, uh, and that, that he can be filled with peace in these last times with his family. So what I'm going to encourage you to do, uh, we have this quilt, tie a knot. When you tie that knot, say a prayer for him. When we give him this quilt, he will feel your prayers. Good friends, as you leave this place today, it is my prayer that God would keep you safe from harm, but it's also my prayer that God would increase our faith, that God would increase our love, and that God would give us the courage to be the church to everyone and anyone who needs us to be the church. Amen. Good job, man.